Welcome to Now, I'm your host, Curtis Parody, bringing you the news happening in the world right now. Well, it's official, 2012 is coming to a close, and I thought, well, we should take a dive into some of the top scientific stories of 2012. First things first, I'm happy to be back creating episodes of Now. The last two weeks off have been really nice, but I kind of missed this, so it's good to be back. And I hope all of you enjoyed your holiday as well, but now it's time for some news. And by news, I thought, hey, let's talk about the top 10 scientific events that happened in 2012. Starting with number 10, for the first time ever in the history of the human race, researchers at the University of Washington were actually able to construct a near total genome sequence of a fetus using blood samples from the mother and father. This means you're actually able to choose the genes and traits for your child even before they're born. Think of it like a build to order child. This also raised ethical issues about selecting desirable traits in children. We'll have to see where this leads, but 2012 will be a milestone in the study of designer children. Number nine is SpaceX. The first commercially owned spacecraft launches, docks, and returns to Earth by itself. SpaceX is a private company that in the past year successfully flew close to 900 pounds of cargo to the International Space Station. Its first official mission was in October, sending the Dragon capsule to the space station and bringing back 17 pounds of freight. NASA has since contracted SpaceX to fly multiple missions in the future to bring supplies for the International Space Station. <laughs> Following the news of SpaceX, number eight is all about saying goodbye to the shuttles. Yes, in 2011, NASA made it official that they would no longer continue the shuttle program. And this year, we've seen them move in only one way. Some were moved on the back of a 747 from Kennedy Space Center and landed in New York and Los Angeles, and even one made its slow trek through a residential neighborhood on its way to its final resting place. 2012 was a time to say goodbye to a part of space history, but it also opened up opportunities for the future. Goodbye, space shuttles. You were an amazing piece of technology, and you will be missed in the future. On to number seven, Vesta becomes a protoplanet. Now, you might be thinking, Curtis, what what the heck is Vesta? And furthermore, what's a protoplanet? Well, Vesta was originally thought to be an asteroid, but is now being classified as a protoplanet because its structure has a dense layered body and it has an orbit around the sun. The difference between a protoplanet and a real planet is that sometime during the development of the protoplanets, they're actually interrupted so they're not fully formed, which means that they don't quite make the cut for being a full planet. Kind of like Pluto. Oh, poor Pluto. I kind of miss that planet. On to number six, from protoplanets to a planet so close to our own, it may harbor life. Identified in October in an orbit around the star called Alpha Centauri b, this new planet is the closest planet ever discovered to have a similar makeup to our own. This means there is a possibility of life being on it. The only problem is that it's four light years or 23.5 trillion miles away. So don't expect to trip there anytime soon. Keeping with the space theme and adding a little star Star Wars fun for everyone, a real life Tatooine could exist out there in the galaxy. Now if you're not keen on your Star Wars knowledge, I'll fill you in. Tatooine, or however it is properly pronounced, was the planet in Star Wars that has two suns. Now the fun thing about this is that the planet astronomers discovered doesn't have just two. Oh no, it has four. Yep, that's right. For the first time ever, a planet orbits four separate suns. It's a crazy new discovery in the world of astronomy. But from four suns, we have to jump back to number four. The key word in the last sentence was jump. That's because our number four spot goes to Felix Baumgartner's record-breaking jump. Yep, jumping from 24 miles in the air will land you at the number four spot. As Felix plummeted towards the Earth, he became the first human in history to break the sound barrier with his body. Such a crazy event could have only taken place in 2012. But from jumping down to Earth, it's time to take a deep dive under the sea. Coming up at number three is James Cameron's Deep Dive. Earlier this year, the famous director of Titanic, Avatar, and The Abyss took to diving down to the deepest recorded location on our planet, the Mariana Trench in the Western Pacific Ocean. The Mariana Trench is deeper than Mount Everest is tall, and Cameron did this entire thing solo. He said that after descending to the ocean floor for over two and a half hours, all he seen at the bottom were some shrimp-like creatures, really nothing else, no fish of any kind. It's an interesting thing to note, but when you really think about it, we know more about the universe around us than actually what lies in the deepest locations right here on our own planet. But there is something that we now know exists all around us, from the depths of the ocean to space itself. 
It's the Higgs boson. Coming in at number two is the particle everyone was looking for, the one called the God particle, the Higgs boson. Being one of the biggest discoveries in the year in the scientific community, the Higgs boson was a huge accomplishment. If you're unfamiliar with the Higgs, it's the particle capable of giving other particles mass. Thus is why it's called the God particle. This particle filled a large gap in helping scientists understand how the universe works. And this discovery was of course made possible by the Large Hadron Collider in Europe. And coming in at number one, it survived an amazing seven minutes of terror, it's the Curiosity Mars rover. Yes, number one amongst all of this is Curiosity sending back some amazing new information and pictures of the red planet. Curiosity is the largest rover ever sent to Mars, and it also came with a new landing system unlike anything before it. Curiosity didn't just bounce down to the surface like other landers, oh no, it got a much more remarkable landing. As it shooted through the Mars atmosphere, its descent was actually slowed by rockets on the sky crane, then it was lowered softly to the surface of the planet. Something like this had never been done before, but it went off without a hitch. Curiosity will continue continue to send valuable scientific data back to us, hopefully for years to come. So that's it, that's the top 10 scientific achievements of 2012. It's been a crazy year and I can't wait to see what 2013 has to offer. So I want to know, what's your favorite thing that happened in 2012? Tell me in the comment section below, or of course you can let me know on my Facebook page, Twitter, or Google+. Links to all that and more in the description below. Once you're done commenting, why not click the subscribe button below as well? That way all of the newest episodes of Now will get sent straight to you. Then you can click the like button because you like this video, you like the content in it, or you like me. One of the three. Well, that's it for this year. I hope you guys spend the last few hours of 2012 doing something cool, and I can't wait to see you guys in 2013. So until then, I'm Curtis Parody, and that's what's happening now.